But, like, can I tell? Like, is there any physical trait that would indicate that he's half blind? Um, he's, like, he's got some, some light cataracts going on in his eyes. They're kind of, they're kind of glassy. He said he's in his 50s, right? The way you're playing this guy, he's, like, 87. <laughs> hey, man, he's, he's had, had a rough fucking blind. life. I thought that you were saying that he was really drunk. No, 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 no. <laughs> like, actually half blind. Like, he's in real bad shape. <laughs> I, I gotta be honest with you, uh, and I, I'm not being a shithead here, this is my home, but yet I'm not gonna find much in the way of comfort here. It's gonna be Spartan utilitarian. It's not really known for comfort. That's okay. It mm -hmm. is good enough for you. Was for most of my life. Well, then I suppose it's good enough for me. He kind of smirks a little bit. and So as you pull <clears throat> up, um, pull the carriage into the alleyway alongside the tavern. Can uh, we just like, thunk, yeah, absolutely. pocket it? What do you want to do with uh, Steve and Max then? I mean, is there a place to, like, tie them up? I mean, kind of. Uh, I, I wouldn't say that it's much like any of the cities that you're familiar with. Um, you could tie them to, like, one of the posts of the the wall, basically. <laughs> um, or, like, a lamppost or something. Can, um, can they maybe, like, is there a room outside the tavern where they could just, like, hang hang out? Oh yeah, there's um so like the alleyway next to the tavern, it it would be long enough like for them to like be there, but um <clears throat> not that they would they would go anywhere of their own volition, but it's just it's open. It's not like there's anything that's like covering for them. They're they're just kind of out there. Right. So um I look at Roland and go, Look, again, we ain't got anything fancy down here to, to hold animals, no stables or anything like that, but uh well, I don't doubt that Max would fuck up anybody that tried to get into your packs. You might want to take anything valuable out of them before we stable them for the afternoon. Uh, Roland's going to nod, and um, <clears throat> he's going to uh, leave Max untethered, and he's going to like pat him on the head and say, Okay, stay here. Wait for me to come get you, and if anything happens, Paula, I'll come. And so, and then he takes the uh, the saddlebags off of the back of the horse and like undoes the straps and uh, throws it over his shoulder. And Max like just kind of puts his head like in the middle of your chest and like crushes you. Uh, and I'll, I'll tie up Steve. Um, and or you said he wasn't gonna go anywhere, right? I mean, they're not gonna actively try to go anywhere. No. Okay, then I'm gonna mess with Steve. I I won't I won't tie him up, but I'll I'll walk over and and like toss him a treat, and if he seems in a friendly mood, I'll give him a little ruffle of feathers. Um, go ahead and make an animal healing check. Dirty twenty. Noise. Good enough. He uh, catches the treat out of the air, and he like sees Max kind of like lovingly interacting with Sir Roland, and he like looks at you. And, like, he kind of just, like, puts his head down a little bit as you go to, like, ruffle his feathers. And he, like, kind of just stares at you and doesn't know what to do with it. So I haven't found, like, a spot where he, like, scritches or anything? With a dirty 20, we can say that you have. He kind of, like, <laughs> leans into it a little bit more as you, like, scratch behind his ear a little bit. Like, you see the feathers on, like, the back of his, like, neck kind of stand up a little bit more. And then he just, like, plops himself down. When, when Roland walks away and Skelly, and, uh, sorry, Laya is done with Steve, um, Emmerin's <laughs> gonna get down next to Steve as well. He's gonna pet him on the head and go, now, you stay here, and don't come, and uh, don't go anywhere until I come back for you. 
I hope that. Smirks a bit to himself and then heads on in. Um, Orlo, anything in particular you want to do or are you just going to head inside and see them? After uh, Roland says, I heard that, Orlo's like, hey, you know what? I heard that too. I'm so happy for in you, fact. Orlo. Now, seriously, next time you fire that off, we'll, we'll, make, we'll make you some earmuffs and I will give you, uh, or I'll just yell earmuffs and then you cover your ears. I thought the plan was that you would yell earmuffs. Why not both? How have we not been killed? It's honestly a miracle. I almost have a couple times. Uh. Orlo, like, just shakes his head and walks into the tavern. Um, so, as you guys walk in, again, this place is shoddy at best. Um, a lot of the tables and chairs are, like, mismatched, just things that people can sit on. Like, some of them are barrels. Um, there's a couple of chairs, there's a few stools, like, none of it goes together at all. Um, the bar is just, like, a big piece of lumber laid on top of a rock that's kind of, like, chiseled down enough so that you can stand close enough to it to get a drink. <laughs> um, but, Emran, you would be familiar with this place. This was a place where you would hang out often because you weren't kicked out of here yet. Um, <laughs> and uh, the bartender of looks up and he's this older guy kind of very um like gaunt face um broad shoulders but he's um he hobbles because he has a missing a leg um and he's got just like a, a cane that he uses kind of like walks around um and his name is medrin maz and he sees you as you walk through the door with the, this group of people and he like pauses for a moment and stares closely at you because you look a little bit different number one you you have a little bit of substance to you you've got some money about you now um and <laughs> he looks at the group of them and then looks back at you and just doesn't say anything immediately as he's waiting to make sure that this isn't some kind of a uh game that you're playing just walks in and then Amarin will open his arms up and go ah mazzy little bastard I thought you'd be dead by now. And he walks in and he actually gives him a big hug. And you see him kind of like, see this guy put his arm around Emrin. He pats him on the back. You'd think I would have already been there twice over, but, you know, no such luck. <laughs> Maybe tomorrow. He? Um, uh, he's in his late 50s. I um once I see that they know each other and are on good terms, I I do a nice little curtsy. Uh, Laya, it's not what we do here. Just <laughs> well, I do. He looks at Laya and he curtsies back. <laughs> a pleasure. You know what? In a weird way, this kind of reminds me of home. Is that so? Yeah, I mean, you guys don't really have a lot going on here. It's pretty, you know, stripped back. Not a lot of flourishes. Not a lot of pillows. Oh, you're certainly right about that big fella, but uh, it wasn't always like this. Well, that maybe it's not as close to home as I thought. Um, Emery kind of slow blinks at that. It's like, uh, Mazzy, could you get us a drink, please? You see him snap his fingers, and the, the couple of the people that are there the working like run back and they get a couple of drinks and they set them on the counter. Um, well, I guess I also should have done this for drinks. <laughs> counter. Um, but <laughs> uh, it is as you just as you remember it, Emrin. It is um, basically bathtub like just dry whiskey like not it's rubbing alcohol let's be honest it's rubbing alcohol um, 
All right. So the best advice I can give you to drink this is if you have a weak stomach, plug your nose. And instead of drinking it in a mug, like, so make it a shooter. And he just like, what? Up it goes. I would never plug my nose. That's so rude. Medrin looks at you and he goes, probably should. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to take a good swig of it and do my best not to make any kind of face. Go ahead and give me a con saving. It's a five. Not going to do it. Uh, I'm still going to be like fighting through it and be like, see? D- delicious. <laughs> but like he looks over at Everin and just shakes his head and just looks back at you and goes, I, I believe you. And he's going to uh, take the, the little bit that's left in his cup and he's going to slide it under Laya's nose for the moment. Good, isn't it? Quite. Thank you. I thought for sure you were going to be like, and then he, she pukes in his glass. <laughs> and then I'll, I'll try to take another sip of it as well. Um, uh, Roland's going to plug his nose and shoot his, uh, shoot his drink. It's not the worst thing you've ever had, especially, uh, you know, traveling through the barracks and being in some of the places you've been, but boy, is it also not good. <laughs> what was the name of the pub again? Sleeping Fiddle. Sleeping Fiddle. Lots of fiddles in these campaigns. And I will, um, when, when I'm sure that his friend isn't looking, I'm going to take a sip of some of Zrinka's wine out of my skin. <laughs> Go ahead and roll uh, stealth or deception. It's a 14 on stealth. Maz is uh, half blind and doesn't care very much, so he doesn't <laughs> not doesn't notice at all. Um, he looks over at you, Orlo, and he kind of just like looks you up and down a little bit. You uh, you're not from around here. We don't see many of your type. I mean, can I see like how, you said he's half blind? <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's, yeah, he doesn't. You know, I mean, he's he's can I, older. Does he, he have seat. like? <laughs> but like, can I tell? Like, is there any physical trait that would indicate that he's half blind? Um, he's like he's got some some light cataracts going on in his eyes. They're kind of they're kind of glassy. You said he's in his fifties, right? The way you're playing this guy, he's like eighty seven. <laughs> hey man, he's had he a rough fucking blind. life. I thought that you were saying that he was really drunk. No, 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 no. <laughs> like, actually half blind. Like, he's in real bad shape. <laughs> well, I'm glad you can at least still see a little bit. And he, like, covers his one eye and takes a drink and goes, good enough. But no, I am not from around here. You are correct. I uh, always knew uh, this one was a bit of a animal, but I didn't know that. Uh... Never mind. And he just <laughs> turns back around and goes and sits down at the bar. You know what they say about the company you keep, Mazzy. Um, a few moments later, you see the same kid kind of walk into the behind you, behind, like where you guys. Um, and it's the same one made Emerin. And he kind of like opens the door and like sticks his head in and like looks around and sees you and he makes eye contact with you. So I kind of give him a... And he comes like sc- kind of scurrying in and uh, like just very shyly kind of stands up next to you and um, kind of like looks down at the ground and goes, do you, do you want uh, do you, do you want me to have him meet you here, or do you want uh, to meet him him somewhere else? Did he have a preference? Uh, uh, uh I, 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 don't, I don't rightfully. Know. Um, I, I, I apologize. I didn't know who you were at first. I, I, 
I didn't know. It's not, it's all right. Don't worry. I'll press another gold into his palm and say, Tell Seti I'll meet him at the old hall. We'll do so right away, right away, sir. Then he just takes off out the door. Got my other gold. Um, and I'll look at the other Rusty and goes, if there's information to be had in Bracket Accord, that's how you get it. Interesting. They're effectively like the mail, except they're more efficient. So, uh, who are we asking after? Said he's an old pal of mine from when I was in the Thieves' Guild. I grew up much like that little fella. Running numbers, sending messages, just whatever I could. When, when I came to Bracker Cord with my uncle, uh, he got me set up there. And uh, yeah, said he's an old friend from when we were kids. Uh, he's gotten pretty high up within the Thieves' Guild now. He might have the lay of the land. Uh, is, there, the... is there anybody around here whom we should be looking out for in terms of uh, somebody who may have an old score to settle? Did you see the church? I did. Well, that. And um, yeah, I'm sure that there are some people who are not entirely fond of me. Uh, I didn't exactly leave the Thieves' Guild on the, uh, uh, the best of circumstances, let's just say, but said he'll have her back. We'll go see my order tomorrow once, we, uh, once I've met with Seti, but I'm just saying to watch your backs. How long have you been gone, roughly? Emeryn. Say, say the better part of a year. Okay. Um, so you guys finish up your drinks. Um, a little bit of time passes, and you know that it's about the, the right amount of time for you to start heading over there, Em. Um, and you know it's not very far from here. That's part of why you used to hang out here. Um, it was very convenient for you to get back and forth between the places needed to be in the places you wanted to be. Um, before we leave, uh, Roland's going to say, uh, Mr. Mass, may I have a word? Uh, just one, or? It's a, <laughs> a term phrase. Plethora. Oh. Thanks, that means a lot. <laughs> Perfect. Fantastic. Um, Roland's going to say, uh, I get the feeling we're going to be spending a lot of time around the dancing fiddle in the coming days. And uh, I would appreciate it if uh, you would keep an eye out for us, for any, uh, any people who come by who may not belong or may uh, wish us ill will. Um, and he's going to uh, lay his hand on Naz's shoulder and cast a Lesser Restoration to try and cure his blindness. Um, I don't know if that would work for long-term blindness, but the, the spell description is uh, you touch a creature and can end either one disease or one condition afflicting it. The condition can be blinded, deafened, paralyzed, or poisoned. But uh, Go ahead and give me... Uh, just roll me like a, a basic spell attack for you. Um... Okay. Interesting. Um... Let's see. Ooh, 24. Um, he, you, you know, lay your hand on his shoulder and he feels you kind of like grab a little bit harder. And at first he gets ready to start to pull away. And then he feels the energy kind of radiate through his body and kind of like rubs his eyes a little bit, looks at you, looks at the bar, 
looks at the ground and goes, I knew it was bad, but I didn't think it was this bad. It's always been that bad. Oh. Huh. <laughs> Takes another drink. Um, I think it would be much easier to do that now. I, uh, I'd be happy to. Well, happy I could help. And uh, Roland goes to join his friends in the um, a few moments before you guys leave, he walks up and he um taps you on like the side with his cane, Emrin, and he hands you a key. And he goes down the alley, take a left, second one on the right, pick a house. It's got a barn. Well, as good of one as it can. Put them in it. Keep yourself safe there. Nobody will look for you. Mazzy, you've always been a peach. By the by, uh, has there ever been any word of Devlin? Any what, I'm sorry? Any word of Devlin. Um... My uncle. We can leave that with a DM if you want. We've heard some things. Best not to talk. Bad enough. I'll come back when it is. Um, you guys go ahead and head out. Um, if you want to swing by, um, drop the drop Steve and Max off in this house. It's kind of just a a little bit larger of a shack. It's got a bigger open roof um, on the the bottom floor, and um, just enough space for them to kind of get in and not have to be out in the street, basically. Um, well, you know, it's kind of still in the street, but <laughs> it's better than being in the alley. Um, you can, you know, feed them and water them here and can leave them for a longer period of time and not have to worry about them as much. Um, you head down your old stomping grounds, Emrin, um, which you know very well how to get down a few alleys, making a couple turns, um, and open an old sewer room. And there's just a table, a chair, and a guy sitting at the end of it with his feet propped up. And he kind of has his, his face towards the looks up at you guys as the hood kind of scrapes off of his head. I honestly wasn't sure I would ever see you again, and my god, is it not worth my time. You see probably for the first time the, like, biggest smile that Emeryn has ever had on his face of just pure and utter joy of recognizing somebody that he legitimately cares about. <laughs> well, Seti, I'm about to waste a heck of a lot more of it. Oh, good. It's good to see you, old friend. Things were just getting boring. Just what I needed. More shit to do. <laughs> he kicks his feet off the table and stands up and walks over to you, gives you a big hug. Um, yeah, he returns it pretty enthusiastically. Introduces himself. Um, if you would like to describe him, uh, PK, please feel free. Um, yeah, so he's incredibly tall. <laughs> take it back. <laughs> no, so he's a human, human male, um, shaggy brown hair, um, these like piercing green eyes, but uh, really big spectacles. That he keeps on them. That he keeps on them. Um, a bit scarred up and weather worn, but like a, a sense of intelligence to his eyes when you when you look at him. You can take it from there, Duck. Sure. Um, since the last time you saw him, he, he seems like he's doing a little bit better off for himself. He's in a little bit nicer clothes. He's got uh, a little bit nicer. Uh, 
boots look good. It looks like he's actually dressing like a person should um, that's in his position. Um, and he introduces himself to, to the group of you guys, um, shakes your hands individually. Faya, he uh, gives you a small bow as he, uh, he sees you. I curtsy. Um, and he kind of, after, as he does, he looks over at Emrin and, like, gives a, like, a big smile to Emrin. Uh, and stands up and sits himself back on the table <clears throat> and, um, looks at you guys and goes, what can I do for you? And he has this, just this big grin across his face. Emerin does too. Oh, steady. It it is a long story. I don't really know where to start. Maybe with you two. And he goes, "Well, we've got plenty of time." And he reaches over behind him and he pulls out this big bottle and a couple of glasses, lays them on the table. He goes, "Let's talk." And you guys sit there for a little bit of time, kind of go over what you have um, been talking about and what you guys are going through right now. And um, as a little bit of time passes, uh, here behind you guys, as you're kind of sitting at the table, the door just snap open behind you and slam against the wall. And you hear... <laughs> it's just this, this another one of the, the urchin kids kind of just runs in and goes, <laughs> You've got to... We've got a big fucking problem. And that's where we love the session. You son of a bitch! <laughs>